Hi guys, we are going to talk about the graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x. Now we've already talked about this a little bit. f of x is just y. This is the graph of y equals 1 over x. In order to graph this, plug in any value you want to for x. If you plug in a positive value for x, then y is going to equal 1 over a positive number. All of your y's will be positive, which is why when the x's are positive, the y's are also positive. If I plug in a negative value for x, I will have y equals 1 over a negative number, so y is negative. So if I plug in a negative value for x, y will also be negative which is why these points are below the x-axis. Let's talk about the asymptotes. We have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. Our graph never, ever, ever touches the line y equals 0. Now, I've talked more about that in another video, so let's carry on. We also have a vertical asymptote. Remember, we have the graph y equals 1 over x. x is in the denominator. x cannot equal 0. So we have a vertical asymptote, x equals 0. Remember, asymptotes are lines. You have to have y equals a number or x equals a number. Or if it's a slant asymptote, that's a different story, but you will have an equation of a line. Asymptotes are a line. So in this video, I want to discuss how this graph f of x equals 1 over x can shift, how this affects our vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and I want to talk about the end behavior. What is happening at the end of this graph? Okay, as my x's get really, really large, these are as my x's are going out to the right. As my x's are approaching infinity, what are my y's doing? Well, as my x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you see this red function, this graph? It's not going up. It's not going down. It's just sort of leveling off. It's getting very close to the y's equal to zero line, but it never gets there. It is an asymptote. As my x's get smaller and smaller and smaller, as the x's approach negative infinity, they get really, really small. What is my red graph doing then? It's approaching zero again. It's not going up and it's not going down. So that's what's happening to the end of the graph on the very far right and on the very far left. What about as my graph approaches zero? What is the red function doing when I get really, really close to when x is equal to zero? That's that vertical asymptote. Is it going up? Is it going down? Well, I have to give you a few more instructions. As x is approaching zero, from the right, you see that little plus mark? So when I get really, really close to the zero, coming from the right side or coming from the positives, my graph, my function, is going up, 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 up. The y's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to infinity. As my x's are approaching zero from the left side, from the negatives, my f of x my y's, the y's are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. My y's, my f of x, my graph, it's approaching negative infinity. Okay, let's shift this graph. Okay, now let's graph f of x is equal to, okay, sort of 1 over x, but it's 1 over x minus 3 plus 1. Now, we talked about in a different video the shifts. This x minus 3 makes it go right or left. You have to be careful on that one. 
This will make it go right three. And the one, that's the vertical shift. It makes it go up or down. And it will go up one. Okay, so we are going to go right three. And we are going to go up one. Well, our asymptotes have changed. Our vertical asymptote has moved to the right three. It is now x equals three. Our horizontal asymptote has moved up one space. It is now y equals one. Okay, let's talk about the end behavior on this graph. As my x's are approaching positive infinity, as my x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that means you're going to the right to plot this point. My f of x, the y's, do you see how that red graph is approaching 1? It's not going up or down. It's getting very close to the line y equals 1. And of course, that's not supposed to be actually touching it. And as my x's are approaching negative infinity, as my x's are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, what is this red function doing right now? Is it going up? Is it going down? No, it's leveling off at the line. What is a line? Y equals 1. So we know what the function is doing on the far right and the far left. What's it doing in the middle? Well, do you notice our vertical asymptote changed? It is now x equals 3. Something's happening at 3. When I get really close to 3, this is x equals 3, what is my red function doing? Is it going up or down? Well, it depends on which side you are coming from. As my x's approach 3 from the left side, my graph, my red function, is going down, down, down. The y's are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They are going to negative infinity. And as my x's are approaching 3 from the positives or the right side, my f of x is going up, up, up to positive infinity. Now let's talk about one more thing in this graph. Let's say I simply asked, what is the vertical asymptote of this function? Well, remember, the vertical asymptote, that's where the function is undefined. It's not happening. Nothing is going on there. Look at this in the denominator. I cannot have 0 in the denominator. So when does this denominator equal 0? When does x minus 3 equal 0? Well, we need to solve this. You will add 3 to both sides. x will equal 3. The vertical asymptote is x is equal to 3. It is where my graph is not happening. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about vertical asymptotes and just finding them algebraically. Okay, so what is the vertical asymptote? Or I could possibly have two asymptotes. I have the function f of x is equal to x minus 3 over x squared minus 4x minus 5. Where is this undefined? How do I find the vertical asymptotes? Well, the denominator is x squared minus 4x minus 5. Well, when is the denominator undefined? And hopefully you're saying... Well, the denominator cannot equal 0. So I'm going to find out when does it equal 0. So I'll take the denominator, set it equal to 0. And then let's do a little factoring here. That will be x minus 5 times x plus 1. And now using the 0 product property, I know one of those must be 0. I will solve for the first equation. So x equals 5. That is one of my vertical asymptotes. If I plug 5 into this denominator, I would get 0, which is not allowed. Solving the other one, subtracting 1 from both sides, I will get x equals negative 1. That is undefined. 
Let's look at a graph of that. Woo! Aren't you glad I didn't make you graph that one? Do you see that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1? And at x is equal to 5. That's what we found when we did it algebraically. And that's not magic. That is mathematics. Let's do one more. I have a function, negative 8 over x squared plus 25. And I want to know what are the vertical asymptotes. Well, that is where the function is undefined. I look at the denominator and say, when is this undefined? It's when the denominator is equal to 0. I will subtract 25 from both sides. Hopefully, you can stop here because can you ever square anything and get a negative number? You could keep working and you would see that x is equal to plus or minus and the square root of a negative 25 is an imaginary number. There are no vertical asymptotes. We could even graph this if we'd like to. And sure enough, you see that there are no vertical asymptotes. So what we talked about in this video is basically the graph of 1 over x. We talked about the end behavior. We talked about how the graph could shift. And we talked about horizontal and vertical asymptotes.